ഡിസ്കഷൻ ഓൺ എ പ്യുവർലി സബ്ക്യൂട്ടേനിയസ് ഇംപ്ലാന്റബിൾ കാർഡിയോവോട്ടർ ഡിഫിബ്രിലേറ്റർ സബ്ക്യൂട്ടേനിയസ് ഐ സി ഡി ഇസ് എ ടേം യൂസ് ടു ഡെസിഗ്നേറ്റ് ഐ സി ഡിസ് വിച്ച് ആർ പ്യുവർലി സബ്ക്യൂട്ടേനിയസ് വിത്തൌട്ട് എനി ഇൻട്രാ കാർഡിയ ക്ലീഡ്സ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ബിൻ ഡിസൈഡ് എയിമിംഗ് ടു അവോയ്ഡ് ദ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ഡ്യൂ ടു എൻ ഇൻട്രാവാസ്കുലർ ലീഡ് ഫോർ ഡിഫിബ്രിലേഷൻ വിച്ച് ഇസ് യൂസ്ഡ് ഇൻ കൺവെൻഷണൽ ഐ സി ഡി ആൻഡ് എസ് ഐ സി ഡി യൂസസ് എ സബ്ക്യൂട്ടേനിയസ് ലീഡ് ഇൻ ദ പാരാസ്റ്റേണൽ ലൊക്കേഷൻ and the defibrillation current passes between the lead and the active can implanted in the infraaxillary region as there is no intracardiac lead it has only facility for short period backup bradycardia pacing hence it cannot be used for those with indication for bradycardia pacing similarly it cannot be used when combined cardiac resynchronization therapy is needed as icd has another disadvantage in that it cannot be used for terminating ventricular tachycardias by overdrive pacing still sicd can be considered in those with inherited channelopathies with propensity for life threatening ventricular arrhythmias congenital heart diseases with limitations on lead placement due to poor venous access in immunocompromised hosts who are more likely to have intravascular infection and in the young and active with higher chance of conventional icd lead failure device is much bulkier than conventional transvenous icds because higher defibrillation energy is needed for sicd battery life may also be lesser for the same reason one of the seminal studies on sicd was from brady and associates reported in nagm in 2010 initially they compared the thresholds for various configurations in 78 patients and later the best configuration in 49 patients to determine the subcutaneous defibrillation threshold in comparison with conventional transvenous icd then they went on to a pilot study of long term use in 6 patients and finally a trial involving 55 patients the best configuration was found to be one with a parasternal electrode and an icd can located in the left lateral thoracic region it was effective in terminating ventricular fibrillation with a higher energy requirement compared to transvenous lead systems mean of 36.6 joules versus 11.1 joule ventricular fibrillation was successfully detected in all the episodes induced two cases of pocket infection and four lead revisions were required in the trial during the follow up period of 10 months 12 episodes of spontaneous sustained ventricular tachyarrhythmias were detected and treated 2015 esc guidelines gave a class 2a recommendation for sicd in patients with indication for icd but not requiring pacing for bradycardia anti tachycardia pacing or crt aha guidelines gave a class 1 recommendation for patients with complex anatomy and venous access problems or in those at a high risk of infections in need of icd therapy dual zone programming has been used in sicd to reduce inappropriate shocks one shock zone and another with an arrhythmia discrimination algorithm at lower rates gold and associates showed that adding an additional zone with arrhythmia discrimination reduces the inappropriate shocks from about 26.1% to 10.2% in a study involving 314 patients over 2 years there was no difference in the freedom from appropriate shocks between the two groups nor there was a difference in the mean time to appropriate therapy it is noteworthy that there was no increased incidence of syncope with dual zone therapy There was only one episode of arrhythmic syncope in the cohort. Usual programming has only a single zone for giving shocks based strictly on heart rate criteria without any rhythm discrimination. In the conditional shock zone, rhythm discrimination algorithm can classify rhythms which need a shock versus those that do not need shock when it is deemed to be supraventricular. Data on use of SICD in pediatrics and congenital heart disease has been published. It was an international multi-center retrospective analysis through the Pediatric and Congenital Electrophysiology Society. Complications at 30 days 
and 360 days. Inappropriate shocks and appropriate shocks were evaluated. There were 115 patients in the study with median follow-up of 32 months. 55% were implanted for primary prevention. Complication rate at 30 days was 7.8% and 14.7% at 360 days. Inappropriate shocks were noted in 15.6% patients. Appropriate therapy was delivered in 11.2%. Acute first shock success was 92.5%. Here are the first set of references on subcutaneous ICD. Second set of references are here. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video.